gentlemen good day and welcome to the hindustan oil exploration company limited q3 fy24 earnings conference call as a reminder all participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anuj Sonpal from Velorem Advices. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you. Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anuj Sonpal from Velorem Advices. We represent the investor relations of Hindustan Oil Exploration Company Limited HOC. On behalf of the company, I'd like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the company's third quarter and nine months ended of financial year 2024. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Let me now introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Mr. R. Jeevanandam, Managing Director. Mr. N. Sivalai Sentanathan, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Krishnan Raghavan, Chief Technical Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Jeeva to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anuj. Good morning to everyone. So, hope everyone has received the updated earning presentations. It is on our website for your reference. I have with me Mr. Krishnan Raghavan, Chief Technical Officer, heading the operations and subsurface team. And Mr. Sandal Nadan, our CFO. We have been inducting senior production engineers, senior drilling managers, senior reservoir engineers, and technical advisors to increase the operating and managerial capability of the company. We are pleased to inform you that quarter two gas uptake from Dirac has maintained an average of 23.75 million standard cubic feet per day against 22.9 million standard cubic feet per day in the previous quarter. I'll start with the operational update from the eastern region. Divac gas sales for our share is 0.59 BCS and condensate is about 10,841 barrels compared to 0.56 BCS above gas and 10,350 barrels of condensate in the previous quarter. Though this field can produce about 50 million standard cubic feet per day, we must restrict the production due to lack of demand. This is further compounded by dual pricing of gas produced from the nominated fields of oil and private players. The ceiling price fixed by the Government of India for nominated field is 6.5 per MMBTU, whereas for private producers and for non-nominated fields, the price fixed by the TPAC is 8.93 per MMBTU as of October to December 2023. Therefore, the customers who are mostly public sector undertakings would like to avail the low price gas of 6.5 per MMBG before availing the gas from private players at a higher price. This makes the Dirac production as a fallback after the sale of production from major producers such as oil and ONGC. <laughs> this situation would get reversed once the gas line of IGGL, Gale, and DNPL are connected and commissioned. We believe that once the IGGL line lays its own line from Duliajan to Mumligar, which is about 170 to 80 kilometers. The demand constraint would further be eased out, and the connectivity with the gas grid in central India will, will be fully established. This will ensure that an increased and stabilized uptake from 2025 onwards to achieve the production to the full potential of the field. To prepare ourselves, three legacy wells, Gerard 1, 2, and 4, will be worked over, and the additional data would be used to revise the reserve estimates of Dirac. We process seismic data under review, and the material balance is worked out. You know, GNG study will be get validated by third-party reserve auditors, and the new reserve numbers will be updated as soon as the study is completed. 
After these workovers, we plan for drilling two additional producers to ramp up the production to 70 million standard cubic feet per day, subject to demand, which will be <clears throat> which will meet the increase in demand by connecting the Dilyajun hub to national gas grid. Jew and Pro is the operator to Karsan Block, and Nacho EC will have both directly and indirectly 35% participating in this in the block. After the review of the production data, continuous workover is planned for producing wells to maintain as well as increase the production. Operating committee has considered for drilling 15 wells to increase the production from Upper Gurijan Sand. One exploration well is planned to know the potential of the deeper formations such as Lower Gurijan, Kippam, and Barel. This block is producing from Upper Gurijan formation for over 40 years. Tangibles required for such as wellheads, Exmos tree, and tubeless were already procured. On obtaining EC clearance, we should be drilling development wells by first quarter of 24-25. Substantial up upside has been identified and evaluated by GCA, both in the lower region, Deepam and Barrel formation. This block would unlock substantial value after the completion of the proposed exploratory well. With the connectivity to national grid, additional resources on discovery can be developed and monetized quickly. We have work program lined up for drilling 15 development wells and non exploration wells in Karsan. We also plan for two development wells in Dirac 25-26. The expected capital outlay for the next two financial years is about 200 crores in this region. Kempe blocks. In Kempe, all the three blocks are having marginal production and total contract area is about 38 square kilometers. Well data is under evaluation to know the potential of all three blocks to enhance production. Currently, these fields are breaking even with a meager contribution to the P&L account. In Palich, plan to have artificial lips in all three wells. We are planning for two development wells in Asul and two in North Balog to increase the production as soon as we get the environmental clearance. Environmental clearance is expected before March 2024. Now I move to offshore blocks. <clears throat> we are pleased to inform you that BAT group was sold at a price of $80.27 per barrel. First offloading of 430,000 barrels of oil was sold to IOC, and the offloading was completed on 30th of January 2024. Price realized the average Brent price for the month of uptake less 0.06%. It means we are getting the brand price. While continuing production from D2 well, we are constrained to inform that D1 is said to be activated to put on production. We have removed the possible mechanical obstructions in D1 flow line as well as the dune, and now it is more of blockage in the reservoir. We have given a contract to backer users to carry out the chemical treatment to remove the blockage. It is expected that the backer will mobilize the equipment and personnel to offshore on or before fourth week of February 24. D2 well production is little over 800 barrels per day and the gas is about 3.5 mm SEF per day. PY1 offset. Existing facilities can process up to 55 million cubic feet per day. Currently, the field is producing less than 1 million cubic feet to break even. Seismic data of this block was reprocessed and our in-house GNT thing was evaluated and released to three drilling locations. These in studies will be reviewed by a third-party expert in London to confirm the proposed well locations. We plan for three development wells, and everything goes as per plan. Drilling of first, drilling first well will, will commence in April to, to June 2025. Once you come to the issue of D1 well and continued low uptake, Dirac, we are not able to ramp up the production to the expected level. We have lined up the capital program for about 1,000 crores in the next three years to drill substantial number of development and exploratory wells to enhance the production as well as to increase the reserve potential of the company. Now I request Mr. Senzel, our CFO, to update the financial results of this quarter. Thanks, Mr. Jeeva. Good morning to all. We report that the standalone revenue for this quarter is Rs. 109.04 crores compared to Rs. 72.56 crores in the previous quarter. Revenue from offshore BAT block is Rs. 48.43 crores and the previous quarter it was Rs. 19.03 crores. In case of Dirac, revenue in this quarter is Rs. 56.7 crores compared to Rs. 48.68 crores in the previous quarter. The total increase of Rs. 36.48 crores in sales is mainly due to increase in production in BAT field. Field operating expenses for this quarter in the standalone account is Rs. 76.23 crores 
compared to rupees 50.46 crores in the previous quarter. This increase is mainly due to increase in operating days of BIT fees. Total expenses including depreciation, depletion and stock adjustment is rupees 101.84 crores compared to rupees 32.09 crores in the previous quarter. The increase is mainly due to increase in operating days of BIT fees. Oil in stock in FSO as on 30th September was 3,29,000 barrels and increased to 4,25,000 barrels as on 31st December 23, out of which 60% belongs to HOEC. Stock adjustment and credit for the current quarter is Rs. 3.4 crores, whereas it was Rs. 43.52 crores in the previous quarter. This difference is mainly because of the price of crude oil, which was $93.54 dollars per barrel, as on 30th September, and it, was, it is 76.742 per barrel dollars per barrel on 31st December. We liquidated this inventory on January 24 at 80.27 dollars per barrel. Standalone EBITDA is rupees 16.74 crores compared to rupees 49.05 crores, and the profit after tax is rupees 4.82 crores compared to rupees 38.74 crores in the previous quarter. The reduction in profit after tax is mainly due to decrease in food price of the inventory as stated earlier. In consolidated account, the total revenue for this quarter is Rs. 192.75 crores compared to Rs. 119.74 crores in the previous quarter. This was due to increase in operational days of FSO and MOPO amounting to about Rs. 35.55 crores and VAT production. Operating expenses including facilities in the consolidated account for this quarter is Rs. 89.93 crores compared to Rs. 63.63 crores in the previous quarter. This increase in cost is due to increase in field operating cost in VAT field as days increase from 48 days to 92 days. Total expenses including depreciation, depletion and amortization and stock adjustment in control account for this quarter is 137.2 crores compared to Rs. 69.4 crores in the previous quarter. Consolidated profit after tax is Rs. 46.57 crores against Rs. 43.17 crores in the previous quarter. Picked off for the current quarter in the consolidated account is Rs. 80.14 crores compared to Rs. 72.58 crores in the previous quarter. As, on, as of now, the outstanding loans in the standalone books are Rs. 87.55 crores and in the subsidiary books Rs. 69 crores. Company has A, payable rating for Rs. 500 crores bank loan from India ratings. With this, with this current cash position and with the continuous, we will meet all our obligations, including the proposed work program for the coming three years as planned. Thanks. And back to Sujiva. Thanks, Andil. Now we can open the forum for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jigesh Gandhi from Discovery Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you. Congratulations on the quarter. I just had a question, uh, how much is the MPM losses we would have on oil given that the prices had, had like, come down slightly from the end of Q2? You are asking about uh, what is the price? Look, the MPM losses which we've had, the market losses we would have booked uh, this quarter on the oil because of yeah, the Yeah, fast market impact is 26 crores. It's about 26 crores. Sir, so, so I mean, assuming the prices stay flattish at this around 18 dollars or whatever it may be, so then at the existing production rate, we should actually uh, assume our like, run rate of effectively PBT is at 50 crores plus is the, uh, the 26 crores, right? I mean, that's the way in which we should be looking at it. And that's right, because the standalone, the impact of 26 crores was there. 
Okay, I'm sure. And that's about five crores would get redder in the next quarter. So would be in the same range if everything goes as planned. Got it. Understood. So, and the other question was if you could just throw some light on because a baker who we have who who we have appointed are they uh, a credible international agency with regards to this particular thing? And is there anything you can ever I ask with regards to any expectations around how long? the test process will take up mobilization and any risks involved or or you know are they reasonably certain that they can sort of resolve this is that just the the fact remains biker uses is one of the best internationally reputed oil and gas company there are only few companies slumberger celebrator and biker uses they are picked one of the best company now they they have studied and they have given a report to us based on the report now they are mobilizing the chemicals and the equipment to do the uh, operations at the offshore now the issue is we have to mobilize all these equipments in place to mumbai port then it has to be taken to the offshore once it is in offshore the job should not take more than about a weeks time so in all probabilities we are expecting they should mobilize all the equipments and everything before the end of this month and the operations should start by the first week of march got it. got it. Yes. so the other question was if the price we have been able to get for the oil is an extremely small discount to brent so is that uh, is that the price you should expect going ahead as well and is that a, is you know and is that effectively is reflection on the quality of the oil or is it some other factors that has you know the let to such a small discount on brand with regards to our oil sale price this is we got the brand price the discount is yeah. only 0.06% yeah 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 no i think the expectations that we had was that the discount might have been slightly higher so just wanted to understand you know the reasons and and if it going ahead also we would expect to get around with the brand price on it that's right our quality of the crude is good enough that we should be getting a brand and the minus will be very very limited it should be on 0.06% hard sir and and the uh, last question was with regards to uh, the connectivity of the rock with with the national grid uh gale etc on actually on track with regards to the pipeline and any expectations around timeline or is there any little delay expected on that so we are not directly involved with this but we have been on a continuous discussion with the, the persons involved in that we are expecting by october the dntl line will get upgraded so that will improve some demand then uh, we are expecting that uh, by march that's what the time it may be plus minus that the gale connectivity will be with uh, igtl and then we will be able to make from uh, gauhati to numligar numligar to dilyajan so there is expected the some demand increase will happen by that process that in indra danush they are laying their own new line from enarol to dilyajan that is expected to be completed by march 26 so that means the full connectivity to the national grid would get established by year should be 26 27 there should not be any demand constraint to us because all our gas can go to the national grid got it got it so thank you so much and thank you me as for knowledge thank you sir thank you thank you very much The next question is from the line of Rikesh Parekh from Rockstar Capital LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on, uh, on the first crude offering from BAT. Uh, sir, just to start off with BAT, uh, can you just explain uh, what is the, the real problem now? Right now, means what we have written is that. Uh, uh the flushing of the chemical and uh, hot thing has been done but uh, uh there is uh, topside issues uh, means there is some further work which need to be done so what is the real problem at, at block b uh, sorry well d1 so you are aware that the d1 was well was producing 
after the cyclone we shut the well during the cyclone we have been asked to shut down so we shut the well after shutting down the well when you we open it it was not producing so we thought there is initially a mechanical obstructions so these mechanical obstructions one by one we have cleaned it up to the direction the d1 flow line was cleaned up now and the tubing also cleaned up now the backer study is completed we are expecting there is some reservoir blockage this reservoir blockage is because of the <coughs> because of the various issue which has happened now that has to be addressed by the chemical treatment now once the backer comes and do the operations we will get to know the results so uh, this reserve blockage is a, like a general or a, there is a major concern as such because after one uh, means uh, after the chemical there can be some concern because previously we had a concern around the pressure and all those things so just to slightly more detail if you can provide on that so there is a they see yes, at the moment we know there is a blockage in the reservoir because this has to be addressed by a chemical treatment once we get back to the production from this well by the chemical treatment then we will get to know how, how at what interval we have to pump the uh, chemicals and we will be knowing the full impact after the backer completed the operations it is too premature to say anything at this stage and uh, what is the one time cost for this uh, uh, overall uh, for the getting it back to the operation it's about 300000 dollars okay uh, second question uh, on the zero of uh, sir uh, means we have completed the forest uh, part of the laying so we wanted to understand by when we will be able to connect it to the hub as such to bring it to julia jan so that uh, forest section has been completed 50% is over the balance we have to get into the next season it should be around uh, 2000 it should be expected to be completed by the mother side will be get completed by december 2025 but that is not a major constraint if the dnpl line is connected we have got a time line with the katalkudi so that will ramp up uh, that will meet our ramp up the production up to 1 million plus so uh, can can we be safe to assume that uh, from cq we might be able to increase from our uh, uh, 29 uh, million uh, to 50 to bring it to, to 50 production if dnpl pipeline is ready by october so oh, if the dnpl is there if they are allowing us we can go up to 1.2 million that should be around say 40 plus okay uh, that's all and the last question on the py1 uh, so now we have got the initial study and we are expecting the to start drilling from april to june so have we uh, uh, closed on the means uh, any well or uh, the rig as such to or have we procured the rig no not yet because what is happening is we have to go for a we have our, our team has done a good work and they are very confident in the budget and they are drilling three wells and they have identified the location also but we wanted to be abundantly cautious we are taking uh, third party expert expert from uh, on the uh, fracture basement from london and they will be coming here for studying about 15 days then <clears throat> the collaborative study of our team as well as the experts will be presented to another uh, uh, third party reserve guys in london rps energy and once they are uh, confirming all the facts and everything data and everything totally being reviewed we will be releasing the uh, revising or uh, maintaining the same locations as the case may be and after that we will mobilize that drilling rig okay Thank you. That's it for me, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Oh yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, uh, regarding the capex that you mentioned for the next three years, around thousand crores, if you could uh, list down what capex are we doing and what amount is going to be spent for which well. 
and also what is our internal revenue target or um, a kind of aspirational number from the same and expected IRR in next three to four years. The, uh, the wells we are planning for the next year, including uh, total is about uh, drilling up 15 wells, out of which one would be an exploration well. And the interventions we are planning for about uh, six uh, well interventions. And uh, the expected outlay is about 160 crores on the next financial year. And 25-26, uh, we will be embarking on the program for the PY1 drilling. And uh, there are also we will be drilling uh, two more wells. And two more deep wells also we are planning on the success of the first well. That is about 540 crores we plan for it. And 26-27, uh, BAT we have, as planned, we have to do three development wells and connect it. That is about 300 crores. This is our plan outlay for 1,000 crores. And IRR as such, we will not be doing any project less than 21% uh, post-tax. Okay, and if you could also share any internal revenue target that you have. So these are the based on our cash flow projections. We will be meeting within our uh, internal approval only. No, like uh, I wasn't asking about funding. I was asking about any internal revenue target or any aspirational number that you have in your mind from the uh, set capex. So we have our uh, existing produ producing field. Virat is there, and then BAT is there. And uh, with the three workovers, uh, three workover uh, of uh, Dera and uh, three workover of Palij and immediate drilling of the Nardalol and Arjol, we will be able to meet the the capital expenditure at which of uh, 160 crores next year very comfortably without any issue. And 25-26, if D1 comes, and we will be comfortable to meet the 540 crores. And these are staggered expenditures. It is a success-driven success. Basically, the first well will be only about $10 million. And that drives the rest of the things. There should not be any problem of us. The problem of getting 1,000 crores over a period of three years. Oh, okay. um, and what is our expected revenue and uh, operating cash flow for next two years, FI25 and FI26, if you could share, please? That's what the number I told you. you know, I can't give you the exact number as such. And uh, our internal approval, we do our cash flow. Based on the cash flow, we are comfortable with this. Okay. Uh, also, sir, regarding the BAT, the oil, what oil production do we see for FI25? And what kind of optimum level of production can we do there? And uh, by when do we look to achieve that? So this could be known to us after the... Backer completed their operations in the field. So we are waiting for the backer report. Okay. Okay. I'll get back in. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shaha from Laser Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, if you can share, uh, earlier we used to do around 11 to 14 uh, gas production from B2. Now that has come down to, I think, 5.7. And I think the oil production has gone up. So is there a problem in the D2 well wherein the gas production has come down and the oil production has gone up? And is it going to sustain going forward? See, this is an expected in the D2 well, the gas production will come down, oil production will go up. It is behaving as predicted. Okay, so this is going to now stay the way it is or this is again going to change? See, we can't say it is a subsurface issue, but uh, we expect that it will maintain at this level. Okay, and from the D1... Uh, earlier, I think we were targeting around 3,000 barrels of oil approximately. Now, that we kept on reducing and now it's around 400, 500. Now, right now, it's not there. But your thing, expectation is only around 800 or 1,000 barrels after it opens up or there is no clue on that? Uh, 
I just, you asked a question about the D2 well, right? Which I answered as such 800 plus 3.5 million, right? We have not discussed about the D1 well. D1 well results will be known after the backer treatment is completed. Backer operation is completed. After backer operation is completed. Uh, okay, and can we have an update once the process by backer is done on the stock exchange? Is it possible? It's a continuing process, you know. If the backer will come out and they do some operations, so they find something more to be done, we will engage them continuously to do that till the well is fully activated. It is not a one-stop... That, that, that process I'm understanding. Once the baker says, okay, fine, I'm done with everything, whatever was there. Now, this is the result that is there. After that, can we update? Uh, it's, I, basically, what I want to say, I don't want to update the next results. Wherein then I understand, okay, my, what is the problem with the D1? As a shareholder, uh, being a co-owner of the company, basically I want to stay updated on the, because I think it is a material event for me, because how the D1 production comes according to the results will also get expected. So that is my concern. So that is what I'm trying to ask you. Tejas, we would like to tell you one thing. You are our co-shareholder, co-partner in the business. We fully appreciate that. You have to understand this is an oil and gas field operations, right? So it is not an end, it is a subsurface. Once the well is continuously flowing to our satisfaction, yes, we will be able to maintain it, then we will certainly inform to you. We cannot come to you and say that sporadically it is producing today, and within a day we cannot say again it is closed. We can't do that. So we establish ourselves a continuous flow of the D1 well, and then we will certainly inform to you. Inform to the exchange, you will get the note. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's from my side. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Aman Chaudhary from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. So, uh, two quick questions uh, from my side. Uh, first one being, uh, so with respect to Deroc, so Deroc production has remained stable. Uh, when should we see, see this trend move upwards? See, Amar, that uh, once the gas grid gets connected, either in a bigger way means that is the uh, 180 kilometers line of uh, IGGL to normally get to the gas zone. That will ensure the full connectivity to the grid. A limited connectivity to the grid could be established with the DMPL line because it is having a patchwork of some 50 kilometers we have to done. That it has to be done. Now, the, now once that gets completed, we would get eased out to the extent of at least a 1 million uh, standard cubic feet per day, comfortably. So these are linked to various uh, uh, the facilities and gas grid connections and all. We cannot predict the exact number. Once the DMPL line gets activated, we are sure that we should be able to ramp up at least about uh, 40 million standard cubic feet per day. Then 25, 23, or 24, we will be able to re reach up to 40. Sure. Sure. Thanks. And second question with respect to Cambay. Uh, any update on enhancing the production uh, to 500 barrels of oil per day? Yeah, we are uh, working on it at the moment. We take, uh, we have submitted the proposal to the partners, and once that gets approved, and we will be lining up three wells on the artificial lift. That our people are confident that should increase the production from the field up to 500 barrels. Sure, and uh, just to chip in, uh, uh, with respect to BAT, for how many days did? Uh, one well contribute in uh, the third quarter and secondly, on the same, uh, the second well, when do we expect uh, operations to begin? One well was in a continuous operation for the entire 91 days. There is no issue on it. And uh, the second well, uh, that's what we are uh, looking at back at to commence it. So, probably this quarter we may be end up with uh, one well only. Sorry, I did not catch it. So when will the second well the start operation? The fourth quarter, we may end up with only one well, unless uh, the job and operations are get quicker on it. But that would be only in the mid of uh, March as such. So 
So we can count that one well production will continue from PIG. Okay, sure. So nothing from the second well in FI24 at least. Yeah, that uh, we believe in it and uh, Bagger is working on it. Okay, sure. Thanks. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Vaibhav Parjatiya from Honesty and Integrity Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. Thanks for providing the opportunity. I, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, I think, uh, you know, you mentioned about DNPL pipeline when, uh, uh, when it's, uh, uh, when it's ready. And I think you mentioned sometime around October it would be ready, if I'm not wrong. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, then we will be able to in, uh, increase our production from zero to 40, uh, 40 million. So, uh, is this uh, 40 number uh, is because of constraint on the demand side or the pipeline capacity or the constraint on the production side? There is no constraint on the production side. This is constrained on the pipeline as well as the demand side. Okay, okay. So, so basically, I think the pipeline will we will not have rights to use the pipeline beyond that number. Yeah, because there is a capacity limitation, you know, BNGRP will also have some issues there on to it. That has to be addressed. Okay. And and, uh, and if I'm not wrong, this will be ready by October, right? October 24. That's what we believe in it, actually. Okay. And IGGL, IGGL pipeline that uh, you spoke about, uh, uh, that would be ready by what time? See, that is what uh, the new line, Numbligar to Dilyajan, that will be getting fully connected to the national grid by you know, IGGL, would be expected to be on March 26. March 26, okay. Okay. Uh, so then, basically, then you are saying that with the full constraint on demand will be removed and uh, pipeline, yeah. will after commissioning of this pipeline also, we will have the... Uh, capacity pipeline capacity issue as such because I'm sure there will be other uh, uh, production in Assam which will uh, have right to use this pipeline. So will we be able to uh, have full production uh, given the pipeline cap constraint? See that's where they were looking at around the 5 million standard cubic meters per day. Ours is going to be only 2. So the balance can uh, get on to it. There should not be any problem. That is what is being projected because this is at the end of the day, uh, the country needs gas and Oil India is one of the primary producers therein and ONGC is also there. They are making this the eastern grid should work faster. That's uh, uh, their endeavor and they are working on that direction. Mm. So Oil India is our major partner with us also. So they will be able to help us and in a, in a sense they will be having 45% of the revenue from this block. So you will be able to ramp up to that level, up to million. That's our endeavor also. Okay. And the third pipeline that you mentioned in the presentation about Gale Urja Ganga, so this is connecting which point to which point, if you can explain, and what is the expected completion timeline for this? Urja Ganga is uh, to be commissioned. It is up to Baruni to Gauhati. That should get completed uh, by March, according to the plan. March 24th. Yeah. So this will 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 this uh, lead to some kind of uh, uh, relaxation on the? Uh, I mean, will will it offer us opportunity to increase our sales, or uh, there, there is nothing to do with uh, our? What is happening is uh, we are at Dilyajan. So from Dilyajan, this goes to Numligar. From Numligar, it goes to Gauhati. From Gauhati, it goes to Baruni. That gets connection completed. Now, there is a limitation of the DNPL line that cannot take more than uh, 2 million standard cubic meters per day. So, out of it, you will have some shares. So, that's why we are, uh, once that line is fully operational, at least we can ramp up up to, uh, up to 40 million cubic feet of uh, gas per day. And then the whole connectivity has come, we can ramp it to just double. It is about 70 million. Got it. Got it. And finally, to understand this whole uh, issue, you know, so finally the IGGL pipeline is going to uh, uh, going to be a thing which uh, will remove all the constraint on the sales. Uh, 
so initially it was said that it will be completed by uh, March 25. Now you are saying that it's March 26. So uh, when it's not directly operated by us. Directly, uh, we have no connection to that. Right. We have been talking right. to the people of the authority, and then we get to have some uh, dates actually. Okay. 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 Got it. No, but what I was trying to understand is, uh, based on your understanding, uh, oh, is it March 26 is also a realistic timeline or, or do you think that there are some forest clearances issues or something that is holding mm -hmm. up and delaying the pipeline? Right. I don't think that is, I, I don't believe March 26 is the entire connectivity of the Eastern Grid could be established. Okay. Got it. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sanjeev Damani from SKD Consultancy. Please go ahead. Uh, Namaskar, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, actually, I want to understand certain things about our BAT uh, operations update that I am watching right now on my screen, your presentation. So, it is the first volume that we have sold. I want to confirm from you. From this particular site, the first consignment has been sold of the crude. Is it correct? Sir? Yeah. So what is happening is whatever the crude we produced, it has right. been sent to floating storage offshore. Okay. It gets stored there, and the storage of oil reached to a size of 400,000 barrels. Then we will be inviting the which from the various refineries, okay. and, and based on the auction results. Then we will be making an offloading. They will bring their own tanker, then we will offload. Okay. In this case, in BIT field, first time we have reached to a parcel size of more than 400,000 barrels and we offloaded the first oil to IOC. Right, sir. So, no, by this time, how much stock we have already built up? Can I know if it is not otherwise? So, I think as we speak, we will be having. Um, uh, 430,000 barrels has already been sold. Now we will be having stock about 35,000 barrels. 35,000, that's all. Am I right? 35,000 you say? Yeah, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 35,000 barrels in stock and we are continuously on production about 800 plus barrels. Yes, yes. You, you told us that. And regarding the gas also, have we sold some gas from these fields? <laughs> The, the gas we have been continuously selling for the last one and a half years. Okay. Currently okay. we are selling about 3.5 million MMS per day to GSBC. Okay. It goes to GSBC and uh, the price which is mentioned is being realized is 19.98 mm BTU. Am I right, sir? Yeah, that's right. That is the <laughs> price is to the oil price as such. The oil price is more, you get more. and. Uh, Got it. But I think, I mean, compared to other sites, we are getting good realization here. So that is something very good, sir. Uh, I mean, there is no ban uh, by the government that you can't sell at X, X price or Y price. There, there is no ceiling, sir, as such for gas prices. You are right, sir. There is a domestic market obligation. Free marketing rights have been given to the private players. So that right. works well. Achha. So, sir, are we also subject to windfall tax on petroleum or no? No, we are not because we have not reached to the threshold limit of uh, 1 million barrel of oil. Okay, that's also very fine, sir. So, one more thing I just want to confirm that you are storing all these collected oils in the offshore area only. So, again, if some cyclone comes, we it may get damaged. Can it not be transmitted to the onshore to have a safety? of our uh, storage. So this is actually a facility. It is a, it is a uh, upper max tanker that is called a floating storage offshore. In any emergency, you can disconnect and move to a safer location. Okay. There is no question of any damage will occur. Okay. So it is like a ship. Uh, you know, the storages are on the uh, floating ship, as you rightly said. I could not understand. Thank you very much for uh, the understanding. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 now, now, sir, in uh, other fields where we are trying, uh, Pali. Thank, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we will request you to rejoin the queue thank you the next question is from the line of ashwin reddy from samadva sorry the participant got disconnected the next question is from the line of ashwin reddy from samadva investment please go ahead yeah hi good morning uh, thank you for the opportunity so first question is on uh, the northeast uh, block so regarding the work that has been outlined for kasan so is there any limit or or constraint on the offtake from kasan given that uh, uh, given that a good number of very uh, certain plants will be have been plant to drill is there any constraint on the offtake in the next month or years no there is no limit by offtake no there is no offtake limit the facility can handle up to 5000 barrels and we will not be able to reach that level even by drilling 15 wells which will be less than 2000 barrels there should not be any limitation okay so in terms of the infrastructure i am not i am like in gas and rock there is no constraint there is no constraint in kasan in terms of what 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 can be seen I can't get the question actually. Can you repeat? So I'm saying in terms of uh, so unlike in Dirac for gas, there is no constraint on the offtake for whatever you can uh, you can drill and you can bring out in uh, in uh, Karthang. Yeah, because there is one Punjab line is there. Once that's connected, even uh, Arunachal Pradesh uh, gas production with the uh, Oil India also having a line in the manner that can connect it to the national grid. So there should not be any. problem of uh, monetizing the gas production or not to produce okay and and what are the timelines that you expect for that kind of scale up in the next uh, say is it like one year or, or how do you think about that so we are planning to do the development well starting from the first quarter of the next financial year then we are embarking on a continuous drilling program we are not stopping it after drilling the six wells we have a small pause for a few days to review the data and uh, then further drilling will continue there on board at least to complete minimum of 15 wells there on development wells to the upper region and meanwhile we are getting getting one more uh, rig uh, which can go to the lower region formation of lower region and tipam and barrel formations so the deeper well research exploratory well is uh, successful then we will continue to drill two more exploratory wells and all the exploratory wells in onshore can be put on as a development well so we will start uh, producing from these exploratory wells also so this we expected uh, about two continuous uh, financial years 24 25 and 25 26 okay <coughs> okay got it got it and uh, my second question is on is on bedrock Okay. Uh, so for the uh, for these quarters and for now on, should we assume the the minimum that you'll do is 23 mm CFT, or is there a chance to go back to what you used to do before, like 35 was was the norm, right? Something. So then again, there's there's an there's optic issues, etc. So as you speak, as it as there be any ramp up from the level of 2024, or are you continuing at 2324? Ashwin, I'm ready with the production. Because the demand is not in my hands, because it is uh, basically the chief right. garden, the, the many public sector undertaking, BCPL and uh, NRL, and all should be continuously operating. In such a case, I will continue. This is too difficult for me to predict. This is the volume at this stage. Got it. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And regarding DAT, DAT. So regarding the D1 well, is there a chance that we may miss the uh, we can miss, miss the weather window for this time, or is that out of scope, or is that a possibility as well in terms of the repair yeah. being done? We are looking into the all the interventions without the risk. If any risk intervention is required, it could be only on the after the monsoon. But we, we will get to know only the backer completes the job. Not before that. 
So at least whether the rigor is required or not will be confirmed, uh, say, by March. Is that is that a fair assumption? So we they will have to carry out the job, you know. Once they come out the results and what it comes out and how do they feel it, and then again they have to go back to the study on it. And some uh, resolutions we expect on this. And if uh, everything goes worse, only we have to go for the drilling. That is the last uh, drilling rig. That is the last option. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Alright, thank you so much, and good luck. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Darshika Kemka from AV Fine Corp. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is that could you help us with the breakdown of the revenue by DAT and their office? Okay. I'm sorry, this question is yeah, a question. So the revenue from uh, DAT and the DIRAS, right? Yes. Yeah. I'll give you the number. See, the DIRAS, DIRAS number is... Uh, DIT, we have uh, got the total revenue of uh, 70, total revenue 34 uh, crores. The uh, could you repeat that number? I'm sorry. 34 crores. All right. Okay. And the Virat, uh, Virat is about uh, 51 crores. All right. And uh, how about the balance number? These are the net revenue I've given to you because some adjustments oh. would have been there to, to the extent of uh, profit oil and other things. The government share. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Jayesh Gandhi. From Harshad Gandhi Security Private Limited. Please go ahead. If I heard you correct, you said that uh, uh, production from D2L in BAT is currently 800 barrels per day. And uh, your inventory is closer to 35,000 barrels. So if, if, if I uh, count, uh, count it for the current quarter, then we should not be able to sell more than say hundred and one lakh ten thousand or one lakh twenty thousand rupees. In that case, is my understanding correct? So your understanding is correct. That is why we are working on the day one well to put it on production quickly. Got it. So uh, last quarter, uh, the volume which we have done is four lakh thirty thousand uh, six ninety two barrels. That means we had yeah. we had a lot of inventory which was uh, already there. Am I understanding it correct? Yeah, yeah. This is since beginning, whatever the production that was in. Okay, okay. That's all from my side, sir. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Manoj Jaitwa from KSA Shares and Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and a very good set of uh, Q3 numbers. My couple of questions is uh, regarding the D1 well. Uh, we have given a contract to Baker and Hughes. So, to, uh, you have said, you have mentioned in the presentation that currently the, uh, they are going to start the work, seismic studies and all that, everything. So what is the probability of the success of uh, UNOK for the uh, UNOK, uh, the problems which are there in the D1 could be sorted out? And is there any time frame for that, sir? In Mr. Manoj, uh, see, if I know the probability of uh, success of an exploratory well, I could have told you that this is the probability of success which you are working on it. This is the well which was producing before the cyclone and up. After the cyclone, it stopped producing. So it is a surprise to all of us. And now we have looked at all the possible ways and means why it stopped producing. So we looked at now there is a blockage in the reservoir. That is what they are going to address it. I cannot assume any probability or numbers which you can assume. Whatever the numbers which I can assume, you can also assume it. 
So we will be waiting for this backers' uh, effort and let us uh, see after that what they come out with. Okay, thank you. And my uh, another one question is there regarding the uh, uh, regarding the oil reserves which we are holding right now, sir. So what could be the probable sales value which we can assume it uh, in the Q4, sir? Oil reserves. I mean, you are talking about our product uh, which is in stock at the moment. The, the 35,000 uh, barrels of oil we are ho holding, holding right now, sir. Am I right, sir? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So what could be the probable sales value it could fetch uh, once we sell, the, sell that, sir? See, that would be the expected price in the month of March, right? End of the March, that uh, mark to market would be the price. If the brand is $80, it will be taken as $80. If it is a uh, brand is $75, it will be taken as $75. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Understood, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side, sir. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of M.N. Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Sir, uh... Thanks for sharing the presentation with a lot more details than before. We appreciate it. Uh, is it possible to make the clarity with respect to when you say production? Is it a gross or net? Or what is the quantum that we get for uh, taking the participant to uh, interest in the account? What comes to uh, HOAC? This part becomes a little bit uh, difficult, sir. Can you make yeah. the presentation uh, on this aspect a little better, sir? Okay. Normally, we should uh, indicate that uh, whatever the value we indicated is uh, graph production, and you can see the net production, right? Yeah. Uh, because some locations, uh, it is given as a graph. Some locations, it's a production. So it is always confusing, sir. Yeah, I think you are right as such, and we will update ourselves on the next next results. Yeah. So the next question that I have on that one is uh, related to Dirac. Uh, uh, on the Dirac, uh, uh, if, uh, after laying the pipeline, because you will have to still complete this uh, 20 kilometers uh, additional line, uh, how much bigger market we will get, sir? How much? Can we go back to how much more uh, gas we will be able to sell? See, uh, we have in the so we are getting connection to the national grid. That's what I'm asking. So, with, see, the, the, you, are, you are asking the question after connecting to the national grid, right? No, sir. Right now, there is a pipeline that we are laying, right? With the current uh, pipeline that we have and the consumers we have, we can maximum go up to 30 mm uh, SCM, FD, sir, correct? We can go up to 1.2 million if uh, BNPL line gets connected, 1.2 million cubic meters per day. So we were also initially producing about 40 million cubic, uh, 1, 1 million cubic meters earlier. Hmm. And now the price difference has come. That is why the fall, we are more or less like a fallback. Once the oil gas gets sold and the ONGC gas is sold at a lower price, then the preference comes to our gas. Okay. So by completing this pipeline, we are not going to be able to sell anything more than what currently we are selling. Is this my understanding right, sir? Yes. No, our line is getting to augment our line to make it 2 million cubic meters. It's hmm. more or less like uh, connecting to the national grid as such. Okay. Yeah, so, so, yes, that is the key. Yeah. Kumar, sir, can you please rejoin the queue for your further questions? Uh, this is connected to the same question, madam. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, sir, uh, if that is the case, why we should start the drilling the two development wells and increase the capacity to 70 mm FEFMD? So we are drilling the wells actually by next year, next financial year. I mean, 25. Uh, the drilling will take about, say, three to three to four months. 
and that's why we plan in such a way if the lines are getting connected demand picks up uh, we should be able to ready to get into the market that's that's the reason we are planning for two development wells to ramp up to 70 million cubic feet per day so that means this pipeline connection completion and the drilling of it everything has to coincide with the uh, national grid connection is this my understanding right sir right as it because we are looking at uh, demand pick up to keep in such a way that our capital invested is uh, earning revenue on it so that's why there is a delay in drilling if there is a connectivity to the national grid we would have completed the drilling by this time thank you thank you that's all from my side Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Manan Patel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so, first question is uh, on B18. So, you mentioned the production is around uh, 3.5 mm SDFT and 800 barrels of oil. So, uh, is that assumption right that the Q4 revenue from B2 well will be lower compared to D3? and on the same like we have optioned a lot more gas than we are producing so uh, what kind of uh, penalties would we have to pay if we don't uh, sort of uh, fulfill our commitment of the auction and if this is being an issue towards the reservoir then there shouldn't be any penalty on it. okay uh, and, and uh, So the D2 production right now is lower than the Q3, so the revenues will uh, fall further. So this is somewhere around the range of 4 to 3.5. So we are uh, taking 3.5 as a basis for continuing for this quarter. Understood. Uh, and and so uh, on the Cambe, so you mentioned uh, we have mentioned around 300 uh, barrels oil. Uh, to artificial lift and uh, so by what time can we expect that to come on production and uh, start question on umatra so is that a substantial which will move a, a substantial production which will move needle for us or it just just a small uh, well see actually that uh, artificial lift of three wells in balich is planned but uh, the estimates are there With artificial heat, we should be able to increase to another uh, 300 barrels. That's what has been stated in this report. So we are looking for the partner's approval there. Once it comes on it, we will be trying to get on to the mode because it is the duration of the work is very short. It's not taking more than 10 days for each well. So we should be able to ramp up faster. And uh, the next question of yours is related to Umatara, right? Yeah. Umatara is an uh, is a well drilled by Oil India and we are a partner there in with only 10%. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Mm -hmm. IOC is sorry. IOC is the uh, operator of the block and sorry. IOC is the operator and they have only 10% stake in the block. They have already mobilized uh, they are ready to mobilize the rig and uh, by April they will be starting the work. So the question is sir is it substantial or is it will be small? Yeah, actually, this is a bit of a small field itself. There cannot be anything called as a substantial outcome there. The results are about two uh, million barrels. So once we uh, once we build the well, we will know the potential much better. Okay, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, and be sure. Thanks, Mr. Manu. Thank you very much. So the next question is from the line of Vivek Joshi. an individual investor please go ahead hi uh, uh congratulations on a steady set of numbers i have two questions uh, one is that given the production if it remains the same uh, do we expect a similar results or there are certain one off like you had last year on expense adjustments which you do at the end of the year like something which was not there that is my first question and second is in the balance sheet there is a in the comprehensive income there is a items not classified as profits for about 41 crores for the 9 months can you just tell me what does this relate to okay so can can you look at that what is the 41 crores because uh, this is this is a the number relates to that uh, based on the uh, one we should have a continuity of production and second thing is about the price subject to this we will be maintaining the same number 
uh, we don't expect any adversity. Okay. The Swati what is the Swati Yantra? Can you show me the number? This is it. Yeah, it's in that in the line item uh, eight on the consolidated other comprehensive income. The first line items, items that will not be classified as profit or loss. That's, that's about forty one crores for the nine months. Four one nine three. Okay, this is actually sorry that will not happen this year. This, this is related to the cost recovery limit on the Carson block. And that issue gets sorted out. And uh, by which only we have got the extension. That's being an entire operation that has been sorted out at 12.21 crores. But we don't expect anything like that to happen in there. Not the, not the loss. I'm asking the, the profit number. Why is it happening? Like, what is the 4193 that we are showing as profit, but which, which, which you are saying is actually not profit? The line item above that, 414193. 4193. Which is the line number? Can you just tell me? Yeah, eight A on the un exceptional item one, right? That is the twelve million. That is what in the twelve. No, no. In the in the Which consolidated uh, in the consolidated uh, this thing. Yeah. Item number eight, sub item number A. For the quarter, it is eighteen seventy nine, and for the nine months, it's forty one ninety three. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got it wrong. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm my mistake. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, I see that. No, no. I'm I'm sorry. I got the wrong numbers. My bad. Thanks. Thanks for your reply. Thanks. Thanks, Vivek. Okay. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Nirbhay Mahavar from N Square. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, just wanted to know uh, what would be the net debt number post the oil sale or something? See that uh, consolidated level, our net num uh, debt number would be as on date about 150 crores. 150 crores. And uh, what would be our nine month capex, sir? Uh, this is? Our uh, capex, which we land up, is about 1000 crores over a period of three years. No, for, for, for the first nine months in uh, FY24. Uh, we don't have much capital outlay at the moment. Okay. So, sir, uh, at a company level, would it be fair to uh, assume that our medium-term growth plans have now moved beyond uh, 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 or D1, I would say, uh, D1 uh, production coming? Uh, would it be fair to assume that? I mean, our dependence on D, uh, BAT has reduced now? For medium term growth, yeah. we have a roadmap for the. We have a plan for at least three years. We have uh, lined up the program. In such a way that our uh, net production should move from uh, at least um, 1 million barrel of oil equivalent to 1.5 by next year, and it should go to 3 million by 25, 20, 26, actually. That is what we are planning for it. 3 million barrel of uh, uh, oil equivalent, oil equivalent annual production. Yeah, uh, that and uh, that's what we wanted to ramp up, and we wanted to, that is on our base case also. The minimum actually, when you look at a P90 case, that is the level we are looking at. This is 3 million gross or net, sir? Net to us. Net to us. I so it is net production B90. We have a plan in such a name, which is our 1,000 crore uh, work program, which we are lining it up. We should be ramp up in such a manner. We should reach at least uh, minimum of 3 million uh, barrel of oil equivalent. Yeah, that would be around 8,000 barrel of net uh, daily uh, production, if I'm uh, 7,500 to 8,000. We are expecting, because that is a P90 case, if you look at a P50 case, our target is to reach uh, 10,000 barrel of oil equivalent net. That's great. great. And how much uh, we are factoring B18 in this? Uh, would it be able to quantify? Or uh, I can quantify that. There is no problem on it. We are expecting at least some uh, 3,000 barrel of oil from the B18 block. At least 3,000 barrel for net. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is useful. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you all the best. 
Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, I thank you for the opportunity. So we had an uh, FSO and an MOU. Uh, could you share what is the revenue for nine months and the for the quarter for the same? And how do we see uh, steady state revenues from FSO and MOPU going ahead? <clears throat> steady revenue, we cannot say that because what is happening is it is uh, it's linked to the any repairs and maintenance. We believe that we are trying to carry out all the repairs. In between, there may be if you change the pipeline and others. Uh, sorry that that uh, hose underbar hose and other things. It will take some time. So what we can look at is. It is giving a run rate of about more than that, so about 50 crores net revenue on this quarter. And the previous quarter, it was just 17 crores. And year to date, it is about 120 crores. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. The next follow up question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Laser Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, what is the program for uh, next year's gas contract for BAT? Is there any movement on the same or is it to, uh, it will automatically okay. go for a new bid? That's gas sales. Huh? What is your question actually, Daisy? For the BAT, we had a gas contract for this March of 24. After that, is I can it I that is also, so is that process started or how? We will let you know actually because this contract is valid up to 31st March. We will be asking, we will be starting the process by first week of March, first or second week of March. Okay, and uh, earlier we had used to have a uh, problem on VAT for a high pressure unit where I think uh, it was not able to take much higher volume of oil. Now, when you said in your presentation that everything on the top side has been done, so is that problem solved and now will it be able to take a higher load of 3,000 barrels a day if whenever we reach that uh, output? Yes, we should be able to do it. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Sharma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, um, hi. My question is, uh, what was the production from B1 before the cyclone? I think it was about uh, 1,200 barrels per day. Okay. That's all. And 6 million cubic feet of gas. Okay, so if it comes back normally, maybe we can expect 12 or higher? Yeah, I don't want to presuppose something to you at this stage. Let us wait for the back of the cell. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Ravi Nagara, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my question on D1 where, why it has taken so much time that uh, Black Current Huge is conducting in February because monsoon is nearing. If they conducted the survey in December, then you have enough time to uh, do the repair work. I think it's uh, Ravi that uh, it doesn't affect monsoon, it doesn't affect this operation. This is going to be on the platform. Okay, so so when do you expect that uh, that report, and uh, when do you see B1 oil producing oil? So they, uh, I told you like this, that that uh, Becker has completed the studies. After the studies, they are mobilizing their equipment and the chemicals and personnel, and that is we expected before the end of this month. Once I go to the platform, it will take about another uh, seven, eight days. We will get to know the results after that. Whether we need to do further uh, uh, pumping of chemicals and wait for some days, or the first instant itself, they get a good results. We do not predict okay. okay. Okay, so the problem is the wax deposited. Okay, sir? 
So we, we have a filling, there is an asphalt in and wax deposition. This needs to be cleaned up. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Mehul Panjwani from 40 Cent. Please go ahead. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I have one very basic question because I am uh, new to our company. Uh, how do how do the so and the Mupu contribute to revenue? Uh, because you know we are using it for our uh, uh, oil octet, right? This is actually a. Uh, can you repeat, Mr. Uh, Michael, again yeah. your question? Yeah, yeah. So I am just I am trying to understand uh, very basic thing that how do the SSO and the MOKU, which are basically used by us, how do they contribute to revenue? Yeah, right. See, MOKU is actually a like a process facility, right? When the oil produced from the well comes to the MOKU, there that segregate between oil, gas, and water. The three things come out of the well, which gets segregated, and that has been pumped because there is no storage facilities at the MOPU. Then it is sent through an export pipeline to the FSO. FSO is a storage facility where the crude comes there and gets stabilized. Once it reaches to the parcel size, then an uptake is undertaken. This is the process. FSO is a storage unit, MOPU is a processing unit. Right, sir, but uh, I'm just trying to understand because maybe, pardon my ignorance, how do uh, these contribute to revenue? Because we get revenue only when we sell oil, right? What happens? BIT is a block. That is the field, right? Any field, you need these facilities, right? These facilities are to be hired from the third party. In all the companies, you look at these facilities are hired from the third party. In our case, this is our own facilities, which is being charged to the field. That is where the revenue is earned. This through a separate subsidiaries. This can be used for some other companies also. If tomorrow BIT is not producing or not BIT is to be shut down after seven, eight years, then it can be used elsewhere. Right, right, sir. Thank you so much. One last, I mean, one follow-up question. So when did we acquire this SSN MOFO? Uh, it has been uh, 2019 and 2020, I suppose. Okay. And, sir, also, is it a fair assumption that uh, since uh, uh, some of the blocks we don't have 100% uh, uh, entitlement, we have only maybe 35, 40, whatever, depending on the block which we are talking about. So, uh, we also uh, get 100% revenue for this uh, from these two uh, FSO and MOPU. See, what happened this up, according to participating in the in the blog, somebody would be called as an operator, he would be holding certain percentage, non operators would be holding certain percentage. It varies. That is where the field revenue is shared, which is more or less that uh, what you are talking about, MOPU and FSO is, is like a service. It is like an equipment you give it on rental. Right. If you want to keep on 100 percent, the entire revenue of the rental comes to you. Right, sir. Okay. Thank you so much for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Shivam Shah from SmartSync. Please go ahead. Shivam Shah. The participant is not audible got disconnected. The next question is from the line of Ashwin Reddy from Samatva Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for the follow-up. So, uh, uh, so, so my question is regarding BAT. Uh, if I just see a simple ratio of gas to oil say, from Q1 of FI24 to Q3 of FI24, the proportion of gas is lower versus oil. Is it simple thing what it is doing? Is it any cost for concern in terms of the of the reservoir itself or the or the water specifically it can be? The reason I'm asking is because in the past concourse, we've been told that if there is more gas, it means that the well can come longer and it's because that. 
But the first thing is accusing what is oil. Is this a cost co- sanction in terms of reserve oil? See, this is a gas cap well. So initial ga- production of the gas would be more. Then over the period, the gas will get reduced and the oil will come up. So that's why you would have seen the initial oil production from this well was 400 barrels. Then it is went up to okay, now 800 barrels. The gas is about 8 to 9 million 9 million cubic feet of gas is getting reduced now. This is the typical phenomenon expected from this well. Okay, got it. That's really good to know. And second question is on the B1 well. If you've seen the previous presentation, uh, it was outlined as a mechanical issue was uh, was what was told as the issue in B1. But this time, uh, it has been told as a reservoir issue. Uh, see, has, there been any, has there been any change in terms of our understanding or... Uh, because uh, our understanding was it is more to more more with the evacuation uh, with evacuation of mechanical materials that the issue was. But right now, is there a lot of clarity on the reservoir itself or what is the uh, reason? And you're saying, uh, uh, what I want to understand is, uh, is uh, has there been a change in our understanding about the issue? That's all. Or is it the issue change in the Ashwin, Mr. Ashwin, please. Uh, there is a well which was producing well got shut in. Now it's not the design. Right. So the first priority is to find out is there any blockage. Right? You start with your flow line. Then you go with your tube, tubing. And you clean up one by one, then you get to know then there is a reservoir. So we are initially looked at it as a more of a mechanical issue because it is there an abrupt one happens. Now the mechanical issue is getting resolved because we have put the pumps and chemicals and other things. We have now cleaned it out. Now we have come back to the reservoir issue, I mean in the sense of blockage in the reservoir, which is now being addressed by the backup. Right? Okay, so, on this? Uh, okay, but uh, uh, to clarify, even though it is a mechanical issue with an inside the reservoir, is that a, is that right way to say? Is, is it how many things which can work with, with the chemical flash, the chemical? It's not, it's nothing to do with the, with the quality of the chemical. Actually, I couldn't get you a question, but... Like I'm, saying, uh, I'm saying right now it has nothing to do with the well itself. It is more like a mechanical slash blockage issue in the reservoir. Is that the way to understand it? Yes, sir, it's not a mechanical issue. Mechanical issue is resolved. Now it is a blockage in the reservoir. That's why we need the backer to come out of the fertilized chemicals to treat that or remove that. Right? Mechanical obstruction okay. means that is on the flow line or on the tubing which our people are uh, done a lot of work on it and they've cleaned it up to the best of their ability, okay. right? Now the backer will come and they will try to address the issue on the blockage in the reservoir. Okay, got it. Got it. All right, thank you so much for clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. So, thanks. While we continue to focus on activating the D1 wells and increase the offtake of the rock, we will embark on drilling wells in Carson, Western Region, and PY1 to develop these fields to its full potential to reduce the dependence on BAT and the rock. We will also increase our talent pool to meet our growth targets. We once again thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. On behalf of the Hindustan Oil Exploration Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.